they always call me a dainty princess. I like it sometimes, but that was ridiculous. <laughs> and welcome back. First, I can't believe I'm almost at 800 subscribers. I know I say it all the time, but thank you so much. I'm so happy to make content for y'all that you enjoy. Now, today's video has all the receipts, so get ready for some informational drama. This video is all about Amber infiltrating discussion groups about her with a fake profile. This drama is not well known, so I'm here to explain everything. After joining these groups, she would defend herself while also gaslighting and manipulating others. Sound familiar? To start, here is the name and Facebook profile Amber used in these groups. So as we can see, Damon White is supposedly a gay man who attended a very selective college and currently works in banking and at Apple. He also follows some LGBT accounts that I think were intended to make this account seem real. This all began after Amber disabled comments on her videos due to huge backlash after her ex Casey coming out with a video exposing ALR's Rain and Petals Eavesdrop accusation video. I won't get into the subject of Casey and Amber, but here's a few clips from his video for context into why Amber disabled comments on her channel. If you'd prefer to not see this video, skip to 1648. Today, um, I was told by my fiance while she was at uh, lunch for work that someone messed her on Facebook and it was a link to a video. Well, of course, she had me call her because it was a very private matter. and um. It was a video of my ex, my ex Amber, and I asked her what about it because, I mean, me and Amber broke up six years ago, and I don't care to have contact with her. Yes, she's messaged me and tried to add me on Facebook. I won't add her. I've added her once before. We tried to be friends, but it didn't work out. When, so I was curious why, she, you know, about this video, and I was like, what is it? Because I don't, I don't really care what she does in her life. Her life is hers. My life is mine. We've moved on. It's been six years. But... My fiance told me that she's calling me an abuser and a rapist. 100% not true. It hurt a lot. And I asked her, when did she post this video? It was back in May. Well, I didn't know. See, I don't, she told me she had a YouTube video. I didn't care to know. It, 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 whatever, you know, it was her life. I didn't want to get involved in her life. Our life is not on the same track anymore. Everything in that video was such bull that I can't even, I can't even, describe the bullshit that was in that video. Can't even. I don't want to say I regretted it, but the things that happened afterwards, I kind of regretted our whole entire relationship. And I hate to say it, but I do regret our whole entire relationship. I do. So, it was probably three months. Three, four months after we started living together. We were up one night. I was watching something on TV, a music video, I believe. And, uh, I don't remember why we argued. I don't. I don't remember the argument. But she grabbed my arm with her nails. First time. Any physical that was negative. And I remember that clearly. It shocked me. It shocked me really, really bad. And it was just... I, I didn't know what to make of it, really. I'm 16 years old. I didn't know what... I mean, I knew what physical abuse was, but not really. So, I mean, I was a kid. I was a child. So I just assumed, okay, I made her mad. I mean, when, my, when I would get my mom mad, she'd spank me or she'd like, you know, you know, get my ear or like, you know, the things a mom would do, a dad would do, you know, behave, you know? Now, the place that she said about being hit, those were on me. Those were the exact places she hit me. I was the one being abused. And I will say this, I may I may have laid a hand on her a few times. That was in self-defense. I didn't do it, and I damn well did not rape her. I did not rape her. Period. One time, when my mom and Dave were out, I don't know why we argued, but I was put on the bed. She wailed on me. Beat me real bad. I remember this clear as day. There was, our bed was in the living room. Next to the bed 
was a dresser. In front of the dresser was a table. Between the table and the bed was her, over me, wailing on me. Did I fight back? Nope, not that time. Why? Because she kept calling me an abuser. So I just took it. I took it. Then she took off outside to the bus stop. And I just laid there. Like, what just freaking happened? What just happened? I didn't even know. At that point, I was 17 years old. I didn't know what happened. I, forgot. I don't know what the argument was. I just know I got beat. I've gotten hit before. I went to school with bruises up and down my arms. Bruises. My friends asked me, what's wrong? What, what, what happened to you? Eventually, they figured it out. So every time I would come to school, upset, in tears, bruised down my arms, hands, cuts, scars, hammer again, shrug. Didn't say anything. They figured it out. My mom figured it out later on, but I'd have to hide it from her. Why? Because I didn't want her mad. I didn't want her upset. I didn't want her to worry about me. She had so much other things to worry about. So I didn't say anything. Maybe I should have. Oh, another thing? She says that she tries to make herself look good. Honestly, when we were first dating, I got a message from her, upset. She made out with a girl while we were dating, while she was still in California. Three times. Did I get mad? I got upset, but I was 15. So what am I going to do? Forgive, forget, you're my girlfriend. I was a child. Let me clear up some things for you between that time frame. Before Crystal, there was another girl. Another girl. While she was with me. Her name was Paige or something. I know it was a four-letter name. That Paige girl, I'm just going to call her Paige because that's the name I, I remember. That Paige girl sent her money, sent her a Walmart gift card. She sent her things. Yeah, while she was with me. And why did she send her things? Because she made me look, made me out to be a monster. Made me look like a monster. So she thought she had to play superhero and save Amber when she didn't even know what the hell was going on at all. Well, not one bit. The one that stands out, because it's the most messed up one, most messed up memory, was the freaking iPod touch. She was on the phone with her. And, like, it, there was an argument starting. And I'm just like, what? Like, what the hell's wrong? So she goes outside talking to her. I was in. Oh, I made her cry. What happened? What, what made her cry? What the hell? And she was telling me how Crystal was going to buy her an iPod touch. And it was, the argument was over how much gigabytes it had. Seriously, she was going to buy her a pretty low gigabyte one at 4 or 8. The standard gigabyte. And she got mad because Crystal asked, do you want this certain gigabyte or the 32 one? You know, the highest one. And she told Crystal, asking me that is like asking if you want a pink purse. She was so rude about that. It wasn't just, the, I mean, she went off after saying the pink purse thing. She went off on this poor girl. And made her cry because Crystal asked a simple question. Do you want this X amount of gigs or the highest one? And Amber was so disrespectful about it. Crystal cried. She bought her over, it was over $200. Over $200 this girl is spending on Amber. That's not even with her yet. And she's like that. Seriously. It's like, whoa, you should just be grateful for what you're getting. Why are you being like this? She was ungrateful. That's how I see it. It was very ungrateful. Making someone cry over a damn space on a freaking iPod touch. And the thing about my mom throwing a glass ashtray at her head? No. Uh-uh. She was very disrespectful to my mom. She threw a glass cup at my mom. It shattered on the wall. There was still a hallmark when they moved out because of that. Because of that. She was very disrespectful to my mom. My mom never did any of that. Ever. She never laid a hand on Amber. She would get mad and yell because of how disrespectful she was being, but she never laid a hand on Amber, ever, never did she lay a hand on her. I defended Amber. I defended her, fully, without a second thought. Does she say that? No. Does she say how I defended her against everything else that was put her way? How I lost friends over defending her ways? No. Why? Because she wants to play victim. Victim. That's all I see is someone playing victim. She came to me after freaking three years of not talking. Three, four years of not talking. I get a random message from her one day after her and Crystal broke up. And I'm like, why are you messaging me? Why are you messaging me? Because you were an important part of my life. And I said, at one point, not anymore. I got a few messages after that. And I tried to help her with Destiny, the whatever thing. But I mean, I wasn't told why they broke up. I didn't care to know. I just said, hey, just be honest with Destiny, whatever. 
whatever, be honest with her about how you feel, your worries or whatever, you know, worried about her breaking up with you, whatever, whatever it was. I still have the messages. Um, but see this, this video that she posted, it hurts deep because I would never do that ever. I grew up around abuse. I mean, my mom's ex-boyfriend would do, you know, abuse, not the highest degree, but it was still abuse. I never wanted to be like that, ever. Like, that's wrong. Rape is wrong. I'd never do that to somebody, ever. Ever. I mean, shit. I, I mean, I'm posting this video probably like an hour or two after I saw the video. I couldn't post it then because, ooh, no. And that this, this video would have been bleeped out. I was just mad. Now I'm, I'm still mad. I shouldn't lie. I'm still mad. I'm furious. But I'm not posting this video to make her look bad. I'm posting it to tell you this is not, this is, was not me. This was not what happened. Yes, we did love each other at one point, but geez, she went as far when I would hang out with my best friend, Alex. She's been my best friend since high school. God, we're like, it seems like we're related, so we got like other cousins. But she, when I would hang out with her. She would be okay at first. And all of a sudden, I get text messages an hour later bitching me out for hanging out with her. She went as far as to accuse me of sleeping with my best friend. Accuse me of sleeping with my best friend. I'd never do that. Ever. No, I cannot sleep with my best friend. That's weird and awkward and no. But I couldn't understand this. I couldn't. I couldn't understand why this girl that I cared about at one point was doing this. I couldn't. Now, I did try to come out to her as transgender before, and she just did not have it. She was mad about it. I remember that. Because when I tried to tell my other ex, I mean, that didn't go over so well neither, but I didn't know how to word it. So when I went to go tell my fiancé, I was scared to death. Why? Because of the way Amber acted when I tried to tell her. I was in a freaking... When... <sighs> I'm trying to calm down. When me and Amber broke up, I was distraught. Because that was the first serious relationship I ever had. I was 18 at the point. When we broke up. I was so messed up from the abuse, the mental abuse, the verbal abuse, that I had to see psychiatrists. I had to go and see psychiatrists because I was having anxiety attacks every day. I couldn't even be in my classroom. I would ditch and I would go read in the freaking bathrooms because I couldn't stand to be around people. I just wanted quiet. I wanted to be alone. I wanted to exclude myself from everybody. I had such mental issues from being with her that I ended up for a weekend from Friday to Monday in a mental hospital. In a mental hospital. One place I never even thought I'd ever go. That was it. I was so messed up from her. I'm still messed up from this. You call my name across the room, I flinch. You raise your hand like you're, like if you're reaching something near me, but I think you're going to hit me, I flinch. And err of anger, because my fiance is frustrated with something. I flinch, and I just drool, and I'm sorry. But I flinch because I think she's going to hit me. And she's not. But I'm so messed up from this that every little action that looks like it, I could get hit, or looks like that I would get in trouble, I flinch. I can't. I don't know how to deal with it. I'm so screwed from it. And it hurts and it sucks. And I'm sorry this video is so long, but geez. I don't know what to, I mean, it hurts to have her make me out to be some monster when I haven't had anything to do with her really for six years. Six years we, we've, we've broken up. I didn't talk to her for the first three. First three I didn't talk to her. And then it went, God, it probably been, the most we've talked, I could add it up in freaking minutes, and it's probably a good 30 minutes conversation in all of six years. And she posts this. Six years ago. I've been over it. I've moved on. I have a different life. I have a better life than that. I know you're not supposed to, I know you're not supposed to say you regret anything, but I do regret that relationship. Fullheartedly, immensely, because of everything that happened in it. Yes, we cared about each other at one point, but I don't even care to even be her friend at all. I don't care to be her friend. I don't care to talk to her. I just want to be left alone. I just want to be left alone, and I want her to quit trying to destroy my life. Quit trying to make herself look like a victim. I know she was in foster care. I understand that, but she acts like the world owes her stuff, and the world doesn't care about your past. The world doesn't care what you're doing with your life. It doesn't. You just do what you need to do to get by in this world. But lying, making yourself look like a victim, 
that's not how you do it. That's not how you do it at all. You be truthful. You rise above what you were put through. And you don't bash anyone six years later. You don't continuously make yourself look like a victim. You take what made you you. You take the pain, the hurt, everything. And you stomp it in the ground. And you stand up on it. You rise above it. You stand on top of it saying, this is me now. That's not me anymore. I'm going to do what's right for my life. And I'm not going to dwell in the past anymore. That's what I did. After me and her broke up, it took a little while. I was heartbroken. But I took all that pain and abuse and all that. And I stomped it in the ground. And I rose above it. I let it go. And when I let it go, my life became better. I'm not so scared anymore. I'm not messed up in the head anymore. I won't let anyone do this to me anymore. Don't get views on lies. Get views on truth. And that was not a truth. And that was ugly. Very ugly. And I don't, and I hate to say this, but I never wanted a vi video like this on my channel. But it looks like I had to. My hand was forced. I hope you guys have a beautiful night. And if it's day where you're at, I hope you guys have a beautiful day. And never, ever, ever let someone slander your name. Never, if you know something's a lie, you rise up and you tell them the truth. The truth of what happened. Abuse is wrong. Rape is wrong. Don't let anyone do that to you. Even if you think you love them. Even if you think they love you. Don't. I regretted staying through the abuse. If I could go back in time and slap my 15-year-old self, I would. I would. Be good to yourselves. Viewers obviously sympathized greatly with Casey and were very upset with Amber, hence why she cowardly turned off comments. Wanting to keep up with what viewers were saying, however, she stalked many discussion groups on multiple platforms. One group, the ALRD group on Facebook, went private one day to keep Amber out. She then decided to use a fake account, Damon White, to join this group around the middle of December 2016. Here's Amber asking to use the fake account. Though Amber, at this time and current day, always insists she never reads hate comments and doesn't care about the haters, it is obvious not only does she care, but she also goes to great lengths to read and defend herself in these groups. In fact, in a Michael B. Petty video, he mentions this about seeing ALR with her Damon White alias. I remember Damon White in the group. I remember seeing him pop up all the fucking time. Like he was in every single comment thread, multiple times in the comment thread, just going, 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 co always defending her or gaslighting and then defending her. Now, I was in that group. I remember being in that group. I remember communicating with this person and being like, God, this guy's fucking annoying because there were people in there that would defend her, but the way that this guy would defend her was... First of all, he was always there. He was always there. In every single comment, he was fucking there. And then he would gaslight people and then turn it around. Like, every single time. Next are some screenshots of conversations in this discussion group that Amber Lynn infiltrated. That last screenshot was particularly telling since there were a ton of people at the time who expressed their concern for Twinkie gaining weight, having long, uncut nails, and not being taken on walks. In response, Amber constantly insisted in her videos that she takes Twinkie out all the time, that she's healthy, etc. And yet, Twinkie was always visibly obese and ungroomed, and not once did Amber ever show a clip of her being walked. At this point, people were beginning to get very suspicious. Damon was either an ignorant shelf butt kisser or Amber herself. Prior to this, Amberlynn had been caught with a fake profile, different alias, in a Discord group about her, making it believable that Damon could be her. This next screenshot is referring specifically to Casey.
January 2017, about a month after she joined, the ALRD removed her from the group because of suspicions. This next photo was shared by the moderator of the group. So, at the same time this was happening on Facebook, ALR also infiltrated a Discord group using her daemon profile. This Discord group was made so people could type in real time while watching her videos and discussing them. She was kicked from these groups, and this concludes my video all about the Damon White drama. It's not quite as well known in the Amberverse as other things, so I hope I informed y'all whether this is the first time you're hearing about it, or if you already knew a bit. As always, feel free to comment, like, and subscribe. I appreciate each and every one of you. Bye bye!